Well, as you can see, I'm about to get dirty because I'm going to change oil. And usually when I change oil, I make a mess. I'm going to try not to, but I just know how I am. So uh, anyway, what we're working on today is a 2005 Winnebago 38J sitting on a workhorse chassis, a W24, that has the Vortec 8.1 engine in it. So um, we're going to get into it here. I want to, more than just oil change, I want to talk about uh, the oil changes, but also oil viscosity, uh, the oil filter options we have for the 8.1, uh, maintaining our maintenance records, oil pressure, our oil cooler and oil bypass, how all that kind of works. So I'm going to try to address several different things that I find interesting for me anyways. So, because uh, I've had this RV now for 10 years and I've changed a lot of oil. So uh, I'm going to get, I'll just show you my way and uh, see if it may help you out. So first of all, before I do anything, I'm going to crawl underneath the RV. So let's do that first. Well, before I crawl under the RV to do this oil change, I need to get a few tools. So our drain plug on this 8.1 Vortec is going to be, right there it is, oil plug 15 millimeter. I label it so I can remember it. So I can crawl under there guessing at it each time. We got that, and you want a really good, high quality, actually this is surprisingly, it's made in the USA, oil wrench, oil filter wrench. So let's get under there and uh, uh, break a couple things loose first, and then we'll heat the engine up. Okay, so I'm under here in a tight spot, of course. And there's a drain plug, 15 millimeter socket. Now I haven't, I haven't ran the engine yet, but before I get it cranking hot, I always like to just crack it loose, so I know I don't have to struggle with it. Uh, with the engine really hot once I'm back un under here fighting the heat of it all so yeah I think I already cracked it loose earlier so right, I'm just going to put it snug alright also I to do oops sorry for the noise alright then of course take an oil filter wrench let's get a pair and break it loose you see I got my nice big Wix filter on there get in focus there she go. Boy, she's pretty snug. Goodness gracious. Okay. That way I know when I get back under here and everything's good and hot, I can get that off relatively easy. All right, so let's go back upstairs, and we'll start it up and let it get warm. But we're also going to measure, um, note the uh, oil pressure readings be when on a cold start versus uh, uh, operating temperatures. All right, so you can see our engine temperature, my digital, digital gauge that I installed. I got a video on it uh, from about a year ago. Uh, the engine block is 66 degrees. And I think I've got a 180 degree thermostat in this, so we'll have to wait till it warms up. Uh, the oil pressure, right here you go on the scan gauge. Oops. You can see the, I'm sitting at 45 PSI on a cold start. And... Uh, all right, got buzzers going off. So let's let that sit here and idle, let it warm up, and uh, we'll see what kind of, after it gets to about 180 degrees. Now, you may be thinking, why is he running this RV inside a closed garage? Let me show you why I can do that. Because <laughs> I got my exhaust, it's going outside. So uh, luckily I can do that. It's, it's a kind of, this is, Surprisingly, it's so warm. It's like it's like in the 60s today here, and, and it's December, so December 29th, I believe. So we'll uh, we'll let this run for a while, give it a good warm, and then we'll start draining some oil. Well, while the engine's warming up, let's uh, talk about a few things. Of course, the oil I've always used for 10 years now is Mobile One 10W30. Now I know it recommends 5W30, but I've always chose to use 10w30 and I'll get into that I might as well talk about that now see what that step uh, something I've this is a really neat Oracle I'm gonna zoom in here to the web, web website there it is machinery read 518 motor oils it's a very interesting article it's about you know motor oils fuel economy versus where and it talks about the cafe standards if you're not familiar with that I guess this is something the government uh, imposes on uh, vehicle manufacturers, GM and Ford, over their entire fleet. I believe it is right now, their, their entire fleet, the average has to be at least 27.5 miles per gallon. So whatever the manufacturers can do to squeak out just a little bit more miles per gallon per vehicle, 
they're going to do it. And one way is is having us run thinner and thinner oil, because the I guess the oil starts up easier, it spins easier, and it uses just a little bit less fuel, probably most likely on a on a cold startup. Uh, but this article is interesting because it kind of talks about at what point in time do we sacrifice the fuel economy for premature engine wear, and it talks about how that you know as our engines heat up that that film of oil that is there to protect us uh, if we got a you know like a 0w30 or 0w20 like some of the cars use now is 0w20 that that on a really hot day that that cushion is so thin there's a possibility that you know if there's a particle like it gives an, an example here I don't know like say for instance that's a 5 micron speck of dust Float, floating through your oil. Well, as long as your oil film is 10 microns, you're fine. It'll just float between the two bearing surfaces and go through, and then the filter will hopefully catch it. Uh, but if you have something, if it comes down here to this area where the oil film is really thin, maybe it's dropped down to four microns, the oil, that's when it's going to come in contact and cause engine wear. So I thought it was an interesting article, and that's one reason I always use just a little bit thicker and I'm not going to be in the cold weather anyway I don't I avoid cold at all, all costs now maybe if you lived w way up north somewhere Canada maybe 5w 30 would be okay with you but that's what I've always used for uh, the, the life of the RV since we've had it for 10 years um, and I, I took it and getting ready for this video I was I even called a friend of mine that works at a Honda dealership we've also towed behind us a Honda fit and it recommends a 0w20 so i posed the question to him i said i know what the book says the book says use 0w20 but you as a technician mechanic you if you owned a honda fit what oil would you use he said he would go with the 5w20 not the 0w so that's from a technician standpoint so we're kind of both thinking on the same wavelength anyway so i just wanted to bring that up that's why i use 1030 not the 5w30 uh, maybe you can read and you can decide which what you want to use, but I think it might uh, be a little bit more beneficial uh, Also, you know, I've always used the Wix oil filter. This is the one quart now Another good little bit of information if you haven't been there visit Omisperformance.com. He has a really good uh, list of uh, replacement part numbers aftermarket numbers and cross-references and you can see the, if you look this engine up the, from the factory, they got these little short half-inch filters, little bitty things. Of course, I've, I've run the, here's what I run, the 5160 Wix. I've always used that. Now, I do know some people use the two-quart oil filter, and I've, and I've thought about it. Uh, but my concern is the fact that that oil filter will hang down so low. Uh, I try to look at it this way, look at risk versus benefit. So I do understand I get more filtering, I get another quart of oil. But how much of a risk am I taking if I pick up a rock or something off the highway and it not dings a hole in that filter? Because it does happen sometimes. Those filters that hang down low. I've seen YouTube videos and, and people discuss that where they get a hole in their filter. You know, that make for so that would just ruin the benefit completely. So, and the fact that I change my oil every 3,000 miles approximately anyway, uh, and the fact I'm using the one quart filter, I believe my filtering is is more than adequate. Uh, seeing we uh, I change it so frequently and of course you know I'm doing that based on the recommendation for more course I got their um, maintenance schedule here and you can see since we've had this thing where do we start I think we could we could pop this RV used I think it started out yeah you know, 7500 miles when we got it and for every, every, ever since then you can see here first oil change mobile one 1030 so I've been using that using that ever since year after year so that's what I'm and so now we're up to right, right now today we got 68,762 miles so uh, that's where we are right now oh let me go back because I didn't point this out I don't think I don't know if I panned over far enough to show you all the different brands you know I can just hold this here you can do a screenshot print it out if you want or go to his website and print you out a copy so you have all the different part numbers there the OEM the the Wix Napa uh, so uh, you'll have that list for you. Uh, so let's check our oil pressures now. When I started this thing up, I was sitting at uh, what I write down here. Well, I must not have wrote it down. Going by memory, I think when I first started up, I was sitting at 45 psi, 
and now it's been running for I've been running this thing for a good hour now and we're sitting at uh, well it's engine low there we go now we're sitting at 32 psi so idling what's I don't I don't have rpm set there but anyway it's probably idling about six seven hundred rpm and we're at 32 psi so to kind of give you an ideal of what what a, I think a good sound engine should should be sitting at uh, and uh, well of course our temperature too our temperature is uh, 184 degrees it may vary you know if we have a 200 degree day something like that so that should be plenty of warm so I guess now we can crawl under there and uh, drain some oil okay under a nice warm engine now I'm doing something different this time every time I change oil I seem to make a mess one big ordeal is this metal plate is right in our way this right here this is part of the HWH uh, jack support system and when the oil comes out, I've done different techniques. Sometimes I've taken like a, I'd wedge a piece of cardboard between the bell housing and try to try to deflect the oil down into a pan. And sometimes it'd work. It does pretty good. But I'm gonna try something a little bit different this time. You see, I, I got my oil catcher back here. Just a, um, one of those plastic file cabinet things I had laying around. This is just a new technique I'm going to try, and I thought, well, how can I get that oil back in there out of the way and not make a mess? So I had the idea of making me a little trough. So I got me a little piece of gutter I had laying around. I sliced it in half, get an idea of how it's made. So I'm hoping I can get this in position. Come in from the top, loosen up the nut. Where's my camera? There it is. Loosen up the nut and let, let the oil just come out and run right down into the pan. That's my goal. I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if it's going to work. But if I don't, we'll try something different next time. All right. Come on. Doing everything with one hand. Okay. Once again, sorry for the racket. All right. All right. That's loose. Now I'm going to have to get two hands to put this in position and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, you see what I've done. I took my little gutter, got my little bungee cord on that one, hold it in place. Come over here, the bungee cord comes up the, to the oil cooler line. So I've got it in place. Now I'm going to reach up from top, if I can, and unscrew the drain plug from above. And let's we'll see if we're lucky, it'll drain right down into that pan. Oh, it's too, it is mighty hot. Come on, baby. Long bolt, isn't it? I feel the oil coming out. Start getting hot on my fingers. Ah! There it goes. And I see it pouring. There we go. So far, so good. It's amazing how black that gets in just a short amount of time. I guess the oil's doing its job. All right. So well, that's so far. That's the easiest way I've come up with uh, changing my oil. I will let that drain for a while, and then we got to focus on the oil filter. All right. On to the oil filter removal. Now, always in the past, I've just got my wrench on there and unscrewed it, and it always makes a big old mess, because in doing so, the oil comes out of the block, it runs down the side of the oil filter, down your hand, down your arm, up your elbow, every which way. So, um, I'm going to try something different this time. You see, i got my little pan here. Those are little plastic shoe boxes. They're handy for everything. And I've got me a sharp punch. So I'm going to go up here and punch me a hole right in the bottom of my oil filter and then let it drain that way. Once it gets done draining, I'm hoping then I can unscrew the filter from the block and not have such a mess. But I'm trying to debate about it. I might just punch two. I, don't know, yeah, I think I'll punch two holes. I'll punch one here in the center first, get the camera on it, then punch one on the side because I know we got our filter media in there between because I'm assuming in the center we'll have a direct shot to the oil passage going up into the block where the 
outer edge is going to be where the um, uh, paper uh, media is. So, I don't know. This is my first time experimenting this way, and hopefully it'll go well. But, of course, I can't film doing this. No, no room for a, tri a tripod under here, so I'm going to get my hammer, knock me a hole in this, and we'll see the results. I'll be right back. All right, so it's time to give this ideal mine a test. You see, I got the punch drove up into the oil filter. I see a good size hole. Let's just see if we can remove it. I'll try the other hand. All right, let's see what happens. All right, so far so good. I'll let that drain for a while. Maybe this would be a lot neater way of doing this. Not making such a mess and not getting oil all down my arm like I normally do. So let's let that drain for a while. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. I'm not, I, I toyed with the idea of punching two holes. Maybe I should because I'm wondering if there's more oil on this other side. But watch what happens because it's hardly draining anything at all. But as I go to unscrew it, so it's, as soon as it breaks the seal at the top, the oil starts coming out more. A good steady stream. So, um, because my goal is to avoid all that oil running down the side like it normally does. Surprised how much oil is up in there. But, uh, I'll let that sit here and run until it quits and then try to finish unscrewing it from the block. Okay, so while this is draining, you may be wondering what this is. Well, that's in a previous video. I noticed over the last couple of years, the label started to melt. And they never did it before, and I don't know what changed. First, I thought maybe I had a donut gasket leaking, but I didn't. So I got this on Amazon, and if you find my video, I think it's oil filter label something. You just type in label in the search, you'll find it. But after I installed this, I never had that problem anymore. It was enough to, just enough to keep the heat away from it, to keep the label from, from melting. So I figured that's a good thing, because, you know, that's, I mean, I'm just only looking at a couple of inches. That generates a whole lot of heat right next to that oil filter. Because I do know we also have an oil cooler. That's what these lines are going to here. So I uh, just thought I'd point that out in case you was questioning it. And it's almost done draining. Okay, I've let this thing cool off about 45 minutes. So, um, and it's, it's all done dripping. And you see what I've done? I took my little sound, sandwich bag and slid up over the oil filter. So now let's just try to unscrew it. I can get under, under it. Still working with one hand with all this project. Hopefully we don't have a whole bunch of more oil coming out. That's my goal. A bit of threads on that thing, isn't there? Come on, baby, you can do it. There she goes. All right. There. Look at that. The first time I've ever removed that oil filter and didn't get a truckload of oil pouring down my arm. Very nice. All right. It looks pretty good. I don't see no more dripping going on. All right, so let me get a little bit better position. All right, just in case you're inter interested, I've got my little pan out of the way now. I can see a little bit better. I didn't tell you what this chrome piece is. Actually, it's a universal heat shield for motorcycle pipe. So I got it on Amazon for a few dollars. And I stuck another little piece of pipe in there to help give me some air space to help create a, a better cooling effect, I believe, keep the heat off, off my oil filter. So far it's working. I thought I'd point that out. It just clamps on with hose clamps, pretty easy. Okay, so now let's put up, tighten up the oil plug. And this has been amazing because I don't have a mess to deal with under here. One thing I wanted to point out is when you go to this, uh, let me think, oh, sorry. I think this torques to 21 foot I'm pretty sure it's 21 foot pounds I looked up. Uh, so if you're not comfortable with, so I'm pretty comfortable with the torque, torque wrench, it's in my elbow, I've been doing it for years. So I kind of know what's about right. 
But if you're not comfortable, then I'll, by all means, get you a torque wrench. And I'm pretty sure it's 21 foot, foot pounds. I'll double check. If it's not right, I'll update you. But uh, just get it good and snug. And you should be fine. And also, by all means, use a six point socket. Um, when I was doing a little research, I, I cringed when I saw a fella changing his oil with a crescent wrench or trying to remove his drain plug with a crescent wrench. I said, oh my gosh. And of course, it rounds off the bolt head. So don't trust a 12 point. Definitely don't trust a crescent wrench. Get a six point on there. It's a whole lot better. I did it again, didn't I? I got that racket. Okay, I think you can see this. Let me get up close. There's something on here because I can kind of scratch on it and it, some of it comes off. I don't know what it is, but it's not a completely smooth machine surface. So I'm going to try to do something to clean this off. Maybe yeah, see how it comes off there. Or so I'm going to get me maybe some alcohol, get me a, a nice clean rag. Let me get this surface nice and clean first before we start putting things back together. Because I have been getting a little bit of seepage just ever so slightly. And that might be the reason why. Well, I realize I'm a little late in the video to talk about this. But, of course, we all need common sense and need to be safe about this. Of course, on a W24, you got pretty good clearance in, anyway. Uh, but I've... You can see the wheels are slightly off the ground because I've got my RV. I call it in storage mode because we haven't been been parked here for a good about eight months, and I like keeping the tires off the ground. So I got my um, leveling blocks underneath the axle, plus I got the jacks down too, just barely su supporting it. So I feel relatively safe crawling underneath there. But even when we're on the road, if I'm at a Walmart, you know, and I need to or ch change oil, I'll just crawl under there. There's enough room I can just do it uh, without any jacks. Uh, uh, being raised up or anything so that's a nice thing about these this uh, w24 chassis get that plenty of clearance under there in fact here's what i use when we're on the road i travel with this little 10 quart oil drain container it works out just right because i think this holds like 6.5 quarts oh and there's my little oil trough i made that worked out pretty good for me in case you want to make one there's that's why how i did it just some tin snips and an old, old piece of gutter all right, so I'm going to crawl back under here, and this is what I use to uh, clean up that uh, surface area. I'll show you how nice it turned out. This is car carbon choke cleaner. All right, you see how that, that carbon choke cleaner did a really good job getting it all nice and clean. So it's nice and shiny surface. That's what we want. So I know this YouTube video is getting kind of long, but I keep finding more stuff to talk about, so I just keep talking. So I wanted to point out to you a couple of things that you may not know or notice. But we have some safety uh, check valves in place. Uh, this right here, this is the oil filter bypass valve. So in, in case the oil filter, say you've been a bad boy and you have not changed your oil for 10,000 miles. And the oil filter says, I can't take it no more. I'm plugged up. I can't do any more filtering. I got to do something different. But we don't want to blow the engine up. So what will happen after so much pressure builds up, this valve will open up when it does. You are now no longer filtering your oil. Uh, at that point, once that valve opens up, it directs the oil straight to the oil cooler. So the, at least the oil is still being cooled by going up to the front of the radiator. You, it comes up to the front of the radiator and then comes back. I'm pretty sure that's the flow. I may have them re reversed. I haven't confirmed that. But anyway, that's that's what would happen if your filter were to plug up. Under normal operating conditions, of course, the oil is going to come out this large hole. This is straight off the oil pump from the oil pan pickup. And it drops down and, and goes past these little rubber. This is a rubber seal and all these holes. And it fills up the outer side of the oil filter. And then, then under pressure, it pushes that oil through the paper pleats in the oil filter. And then comes up through the center hole. And then that, that comes up through the center hole and then gets diverted to the oil cooler and then the oil comes after it's cooled it comes back goes up through the block up to the mains or down to the main up to the camshaft up to the pressure gauge i've got a diagram i'm going to show you here in just a second that'll explain it better now we also have another 
bypass mode, which another possibility is your oil cooler could stop up. And if that stopped up, that would shut the flow off to your engine, damaging your engine. So in case that happens, there's a check valve. You can't see it because it's like two inches up in there, but it looks very similar to this one. They may, may be identical in shape, but maybe the pressure springs are slightly different. But anyway, there's another check valve about two inches up inside here. So if your oil cooler became plugged, then that valve would open up. And then there's a third scenario, I guess, could happen to where, you know, if your, your oil filter failed, plugged up, and your oil cooler plugged up, well, yeah, it would be a mess, wouldn't it? Oil will still always circulate through the engine. It may not be, in, may not be cooled, it may not be filtered, but at least you'll maintain oil pressure. So uh, I just thought I'd point that out. So let me crawl out here and show you some more paperwork where it'll kind of make more sense. Okay, well, I printed this out from the service manual. I think this will make more sense to you. So this is our lubrication system on our 8.1 Vortec. And you see, if you follow item number seven, this is, would be from the oil pump. So oil pump sending a, the oil pressure up through the oil galley. And remember that large hole I, sh I showed you that it's kind of oval shaped. That's where the oil first drops into. This is our oil filter. And like I showed you before, the oil comes down the outside. I hear oil goes through these holes, comes through the, the outside, then it's pushed through the paper media, and then it comes up through the center out this. So back to our drawing. So oil goes through, it's coming up. So this is under normal operation. Everything's working properly. It comes up through. The check valve, valve is not activated because it's not got enough pressure to override it. It's coming up through, going out toward the oil cooler. See the oil cooler I drew for you? Ain't that pretty? Goes through the oil cooler, gets the temperature lowered a little bit, then comes back through, comes up, comes into the main oil galleys, heading toward the mains, and going up to the pressure gauge, feeding the lifters, camshaft, and everything else. So that is our normal route on our, on our oil system, you know, oil pressure. So, so when things go wrong, we have different options. So like we could have, here's failure mode number one. So um, this would be like if the oil filter became plugged. So oil filter became plugged. See the oil would drop down in here. It, it wouldn't be going in any small holes. It's just going to circulate around and shoot right back up through that check valve. The check valve you can see. So it would it would open up and go still get cooled. It'd still go through the oil cooler, come back, and then go go on up to the mains and to the pressure gauge and everything else. So that's failure, failure mode number one. Um, failure mode number two, I would call it, would be if your oil cooler plugged up. So if the oil cooler plugged up, you'd come in here, your oil filter would still be working, it's still doing its job. But it comes up here and it says we got too much pressure. We can't get we can't go this direction because it's it's plugged up. You know, can't line sludge. If you haven't taken care of your engine, if you have a, uh, engine sludge build up, one of the first places that will appear or will plug up will be in your oil cooler. Those small passages will plug up on you. So anyway, instead of going to the oil cooler, it's it's going to get filtered. It's going to open up this check valve and head on straight on up to the. The, the main bearings and camshaft bearings where everything's supposed to go. Then we have our third scenario is with if both filter and oil cooler is plugged, then you can kind of see what happens. It just goes in, comes up through this check valve, and goes right back up to the mains. So pretty cool how they got all that set up. As a side note, um, a buddy of mine who reached out to me, one of my YouTube subscribers, he was losing oil pressure. He was when he would go. Let me think of this scenario. When he was going out west, climbing up hard hills, and he'd be going up, getting like 3,000 RPM. He'd get a sudden drop in oil pressure. And now his fix. Let me see. Try to his sit fix for it was removing this valve right here. When he removed that valve, he got his oil pressure back. Um, and to get that valve out, remember that one I showed you, it's kind of deep, it's like two inches up inside there. And the way to get that valve out, I think you um, you took a 3 h drill bit. And you just kind of get it started and just twist twist it up in there and then wiggle it and pull it out. Because it's just a press fit, those check valves are in there. 
So, of course, by doing so, he has now lost some cooling effect because the oil is going to flow in the least resistance. So now, where's our where's the oil cooler? There we go, plugged oil cooler mode. So now, because he's removed that check valve, the oil is just going to flow it that direction first. He did say he is still getting, he can still feel these lines. They are getting warm, so maybe some oil is still going that direction. But if you happen to have a scenario where you're getting low oil pressure, that might be something to check. Uh, it's just, just a possibility. But I guess I rattled on enough, so let's go out here and put some oil in our oil filter. Yeah, I know that's a big debate too. Fill or not fill? Well, I'm going to fill mine. Um, I know I could understand the debate when it comes to like fuel injected, you know, diesel engines. If you're changing a fuel filter, because you know one speck of dirt or dust in there, because anything you pour in, in in this hole here is not getting filtered. It's going to go straight to the mains. So um, that's why you got to be very, very careful. Make sure there's no dust, no nothing around. So I'm going to fill mine up because you know. My thought process is that's a that's a quart of air, you know. If I don't fill that up, and I go to start that engine, this engine, you know, the oil, the fresh oil's got to pump, pump. It's got to push out all that air first. Whatever, all that air in the lines. And I do know. I notice you know, the pressure builds up relatively quick, but I don't see the harm. That's something I've always done. I'm old. I'm going to continue to do it. I guess. You know, you get set in your ways. All right. So let's fill this up with oil, and uh, put put it back on the engine. Okay, just going to top it off with a little bit more oil. It keeps soak, soaking it up as I pour it in there. It keeps drawing it down in there through the paper. Oops. That's got her full. Watch your bubble. All right, now I'm going to carefully slide under the RV and uh, get this in place. You can see I've already applied oil to the, to the seal. So uh, we'll be in good shape. All right, let's get under the RV. Okay, let's get her on there. Just hand tight this eight. That should do it. And always double check. Make sure, make sure. Tell yourself ten times. Yes, I did get that tight. I've torqued it or whatever. You know that that drain plug is on there. It's good and tight. You don't want to forget that. All right, so now let's put some oil. I think about six and a half quarts, and we should be able to fire this up, and we'll check our oil pressure. Oh yeah, I forgot something. Thought this was an interesting find. This little bolt here, I wonder what it was. That is actually the uh, the uh, coolant drain bolt. If you want to drain the coolant out of the block, I'm going to be due for a coolant flush sometime in spring, so I may uh, try that, attempt that, and see how well that does. I know it's going to make a mess, but uh, most any project you get into is going to make a mess. All right, let's fill this puppy up. Now, I do remember when I first got this thing years ago, 10 years ago, I thought, what a pain it is to get oil in this thing. So I come up with something. Of course, you see my little reminder note here what to do to, to, re to do the oil change reset. Uh, after soon as I put this in here, oil change reset, key on, three taps, which that's three taps on my gas pedal, then key off, and that'll reset your oil change reminder. Of course, it does say 5W30, but like I said before, I'm running 1030. But there we go. But that was always such a pain to get oil into. So I thought, well, I got to come up with a better way. So here's because you had to have a funnel that was three foot long, came way out, way out to here, and it was a nightmare. So here's what I come up with with a little thinking. I took me a quart bottle and see how I cut it at an angle. And then another thing I did for it to fit right, I had I took I left the oil cap on, but then I cut the cap the end of it off. So by doing so, it makes for a nice snug fit and holds it pretty much level. So if you've got quart bottles, you can just turn a quart up, sit it right here, and let it drain, drain, drain. And uh, it really makes life easy when it comes to uh, putting oil into your 8.1 Vortec on a, on a workhorse chassis. So I will probably, because I'm dealing with a five gallon jug, so let me get started first with uh, two hands. Okay, do this one hand. I know it's kind of dangerous, but you get the idea. See how well that works. Oh, 
Then as it gets toward the end, I can turn it completely upside down and let it completely drain out. You see, like I said, when it gets near empty, you just turn it upside down, let it sit there for a minute or two, get every last drop out of it. It drains right, right into that little trough. When it gets done, you just take it out. And I, and I haven't spilt a drop. How's that? Now, as you can see, if you're doing individual quart bottles, it's even easier. You just pour it up, sit it just like that, let it finish draining completely out. Easy peasy. Okay, I'm about to uh, start up the engine. I just want to point this out because you know we got our PSI gauge. Well, come on, camera. We got a PSI gauge on the dash, which I'm no I normally use. But if you notice, I got the ABS light on. The reason being, I got the wheels off and I spun them. And when I spun them, it freaked the ABS out. So the ABS light will not go out until I get on the road again and drive it for a mile or so and let everything resync. So as soon as I start it up, the ABS warning light is going to appear over here and lock my uh, PSI. So I'm going to be focusing on the PSI on my scan gauge too. So let's fire this up and we'll see how quick we get pressure and what our pressure is. Engine temperature is down to 96 degrees. You know, we was like 184, I think, when we, when we drained oil. All right, so let's start her up. Forty-four PSI. That's about, about normal. All right, pretty good. All right, I'm gonna let that run just for a few minutes. Let it run for a few minutes, and then of course I let it sit for a while and double check the oil level. It, it sometimes takes a while. Let it sit overnight to make sure where that level oil level is. You know, the thought just come to mind. I wonder. You know how quick that oil pressure is almost instant as soon as I start up the engine. But I wonder if I put that oil filter in there completely dry, how much time delay there would have been. I don't know, don't know that I'll, 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 ne I'll never know that because I'll never do that. But uh, just I would just be a curious thing to know if anyone else has ever done that and checked it. Okay, so one of our last steps here, you see here this is our, for, for the scan gauge too, it's called OLF. It's the oil life reminder, whatever that stands for. But anyway, we got to reset that. So, and also I want to note, you can see my RPMs, 670, 691, 700, it kind of bounces around 700 RPMs. Just so you can gauge your oil pressure too. So, uh, and this is, now we're at 135 degrees. So let's turn this off and do a reset. Okay, so key is off. All right, we go key on, tap the accelerator three times, and key off. Key on. One, two, three. And it's, I noticed it's, well, I missed it, but it was flashing, change oil. All right, so it's key off. Let it sit for a second. And we'll see what the percentage is now. Start it back up. There we go, 100%. Good deal, good deal. Well, I know this YouTube video went a little long, but I had a lot to say, and I'm long-winded sometimes. And you, but I am impressed I was able to do this and not make a mess like I normally do. And let me just show you here. Um, oh yeah, I've seen this thing here. I referred to that as a gutter a while ago. I know better. That's a downspout that I sliced in half. Gutter probably would have worked out better, but I just that was in my scrap pile, so that's what I used. Um, and I just checked my oil. It takes me about, uh, you can see it here, focus, focus, yeah, about six and a half, six and three quarter quarts. Usually it gets me right on, on the mark. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you get your oil changed and because we want to keep these 8.1 Vortex running for a long time. I've read where people have them in, in pickup trucks can get like 400,000 miles on. So I don't know if any RV would last that long, but it'd be nice to see at least 200,000. Take a couple of trips to Alaska, that'd speed it up. But anyways, thanks again for watching. 
Have a great night. Oh, and I'm, I'll add some links to the bottom of this video to that uh, article I, I was referring to about the um, the um, about the oil viscosity and uh, versus engine wear. I thought that was an interesting article. Thanks again for watching. Have a great night. Bye bye.